بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه الحمد لله رب الله سبحانه وتعالى the most compassionate the most merciful all the praise and thanks are due to him and peace and blessings be upon his beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he who is guided by the will of Allah no one can misguide him and he who is misguided, no one can guide him except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I do bear witness that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala an yaj'ala jam'ana hadha jam'an marhuma. Wa an yaj'ala attafarruqa ba'dahu tafarruqan ma'asuma. Wa an la yada'a fina shaqiyya wa la mahruma. Allahumma ameen. A'udhu billahi na shaytan rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Wa al-asri inna al-insana lafi khusr illa al-lazina amanu wa amilu al-salihat. وتواصل بالحق وتواصل بالصبر. Today the new session, إن شاء الله, in tafsir today, if we stayed alive, especially myself, the speaker, إن شاء الله, I'm planning to cover the concept of basmala, and we will try to deal with chapter al-Fatiha, surat al-Fatiha with the Mawla Azza wa Jal. One of the most or the most important surah in the Quran, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala made it the first thing to read, إن شاء الله, with the will of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Quick reminder, in case if we have a new visitors. Now, the main concepts of what I'm doing, I'm doing my best to make the tafsir very simple. As if you are a non-Muslim. Non <laughs> to give it to you in a very simple way. So that to help you, you and I, to empower ourselves how to present this great deen to others. We are living in a non-Muslim country. The basic right of non-Muslims upon us is that to help them to understand what we have. By the way, you need to know. You have to know. If you believe in Islam, you need to know that you are gifted by the fact that you were born Muslim. You were given a gift. Not because I deserve. It's because Allah bestowed his blessings upon me. The minimum, minimum level of being thankful <laughs> is to hold this gift, to give an idea about it to others. Because this gift was not designed for Arabs. This gift was not designed for Pakistani or Afghani or uh, Palestinians. Or the, no, 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 no. It's designed for a human being. <laughs> Every single human being has the right to know it. Allah is testing us when we know if we convey. We need to know that. It's not, I'm not favored because I have a beautiful eyes or because the skin, the color of my skin is wow. Therefore, no, 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 no. Nothing from that. It's just a pure blessings from Allah. Okay, what shall I do? Know it, realize it, apply it, convey it. But what if they don't like it? It's not your business. What if they reject it? It's not your business. إنما أنا إيش نذير قل إنما أنا نذير. You are just what a conveyor or a warner or a person who gives the glad tidings. This is your. This is the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم term. So what about you and me? We have just two. Tell. We need just to let others. This is very important to be aware of. What, what, why we are doing what we are doing so. For us as Muslims and for non-Muslims, they have the right to know. Please do your best. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings any piece of knowledge to you about your great religion, let others know it. Prophet Muhammad says in a very beautiful hadith. He says, Rahimallahum ra'an sami'a minna maqalatan. فبلغها كما سمعها فرب مبلغ أو عام سامع. Very beautiful methodology. Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم says, May Allah descend His blessings upon a servant of Allah who listened to some kind of or a piece of knowledge. He heard something, then he decided to convey whatever he heard to others. So that might the one who received the knowledge will be holding 
an ability, a capability to be aware of how to make benefit of this knowledge more the conveyor himself. <laughs> and it happens. Rahim Allah, <laughs> which means if you hear something, just let others know it. Maybe others will activate it better than you, but the ajr will be <laughs> for them and for you as well. But subhanAllah, which means spread the knowledge. Okay? So this is... No, no. Now, the other uh, thing that I need to keep telling you about it. Last time when I started this series of sessions, I used to deal with every tiny single word in the Quran. Now, we will not do this. We'll speak about the chapter. We'll talk about the general meanings of the importance of this surah, of this chapter. We will go through some of the most important verses, but not every single thing. This you will notice it in chapter Al-Baqarah and Surat Al-Baqarah. I will not go through each verse, but I will give you, you know, the places that I believe, to the best of my knowledge, we need to know something related to our life as much as we can. So let's start. And by the way, final reminder, in case if you would like to chase what we were doing so that you can have, uh, you know, uh, like an accumulation of knowledge about what we are doing, Today is just the fourth session, just three sessions. You can find them on the YouTube channel of Dar Foundation, Facebook page Dar Foundation, Naim Banat, N dot Banat, B A N A T, uh, YouTube channel, and Dr. Amjad Korsha, YouTube channel, and Facebook. So wherever you go, <laughs> You can find the previous. You can listen to them. Check out. You can keep up with us because I'm planning, inshallah, if Allah kept the soul inside of our bodies to keep, you know, in this series up to finish the full Quran with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This will give you very beautiful taste of the Quran that you read. Type al basmala When we say the, uh, the word basmala we mean when you say Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, okay, what's the meaning of Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, and why it's highly recommended to say it when we read the Quran, and why it's part of Al Fatiha, and why it's highly recommended to say it in most of the important things that we do it. What's the meaning in Arabic? They say Mufassirim. قال المعنى أبتدئ قراءتي متبركا بسم الله مستعينا به. Very simple. I'll make it very simple. When you say بسم الله أبتدئ I'm starting I'm declaring I'm reminding myself that I am starting my reading متبركا بسم الله. Seeking the blessings by the name of Allah, Musta'een and Bihi, seeking the help from Him. It's like a declaration of what I'm doing is by His power, by His support, by His existence, not by anything else. It's like a reminder as if I'm telling myself, hey, be careful. <laughs> what you will be reading, what you will be doing is just by him, which means it's because of his support and his blessings, nothing else. Okay? This is the meaning of Bism Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Now, Allahumma <coughs> salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Uh, it's good to know, as Mufassirin said, قال مشروع ومطلوب أن يبسمل عند قراءة كل سورة إلا سورة التوبة فإنه لا يبسمل. There is a fiqhi hukum here. Something has to do with the Islamic jurisprudence. There is some kind of debate whether Bismillah, Bismillah ar-Rahman is part of Al-Fatiha or not. To the best of my knowledge, the strong opinion that Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is a verse part of Al-Fatiha itself. When you say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is a verse. And Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen is a verse. Okay? Now, so therefore, you must say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim when you read Al-Fatiha. In your prayer. Okay? In your prayer. However, when you read anything from the Quran, starting from Surah Al-Baqarah up to Surah Al-Nas, 
it's highly recommended. So therefore, if you read, for example, Alif Lam Mim without saying Bismillah Rahman Rahim, it's not haram, but you left something recommended. Okay? Except when you start reading chapter at Tawbah, which start with Bara'atum min Allahi wa Rasulihi ila alladhina ahadtum min al-mushrikin. It's sort of surat at Tawbah. To start with Bara'a. Say, in that you should not say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Which is an, uh, an amazing lesson in this, by the way. Now, we knew that Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, I'm starting do you remember last time we, we talk about a'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim i seek refuge by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the satan we highlighted what's the meaning of seeking refuge who is the satan in what am i betting by saying this then i start bismillah by the blessings of the name of allah by the power the support of allah i'm starting when i'm starting okay so I'm, ad, I, I'm seeking his refuge and I'm declaring that what I'm doing is by his name and by his support. So it contains the blessings, the power, the support, the peace, everything. Highly recommended to say it, except in one chapter, which is Surah At-Tawbah. Why? Now, let's say, you know, in Surah At-Tawbah, the whole chapter basically is talking about when the non-believers, the fighters, the warriors, they broke the covenant with Muslims, which means they were traitors. They had a covenant, Arabs, the Arab polytheists. They have some, you know, treaty, like peace treaty. We will not touch you, we will not kill you. Okay, so they broke the treaty which we call now what? The high treason, <laughs> okay? al khiyan al in the, in the political war language, the one who does that deserves what? Capital punishment. <laughs> Khiyana. So those non-believers at that time, they broke the covenant, al-ahd wal mithaq. There was a, an agreement, a treaty, Mu'ahada, covenant, ahd, mithaq. So they broke it. So Allah is declaring the war against them. So it does not fit <laughs> to start Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allah uh, ar-Rahim is declaring the war against those who broke the covenant. Go and fight them because they are, it does not fit. Does not fit means what? Look how clear and how amazing and how honest Islam is. It's very clear. That's why, by the way, that's why, even in the war, by the way, some people, they don't know, at the time of war, if even by mistake, you were in a war between two, two you know, by the way, wars at that time, it was not like our time. It was not like big armies, organized armies, and all of them just, you know, take high technology. You have, they have radars and something, special uniform and something. They don't have. And sometimes if the army contains, let's say, 5,000 and 5,000, they will spread in, a, in an area of a big piece of land, okay? You know, 10 will be fighting here, another 50 will be fighting here, another 200 will be fighting here. In a, and sometimes they fight for one, two, three hours, they become what? Tired. They take rest. <laughs> well, why? Because, you know, it's, it's a literal muscle, you know, manpower. Can you keep fighting for 10 hours like this? Hardly you can do it for half an hour. One hour, two hours, they take rest. They take rest, they continue fighting. Okay? So sometimes you have bushes, you have trees, you have rocks, you have people injured, you have uh, some people are taking rest. They, they set to eat <laughs> and they continue fighting. It's not like our times. No, no, no. It's, it's completely different. So, so, if by mistake you did not recognize that this was person was not from your enemy and you said Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, which means peace be upon you, you have no right to kill him <laughs> if you discovered he's your enemy. <laughs> because you said what? Assalamu alaikum, which means. You know what does mean? Assalamu alaikum. 
Peace be upon you. It's a covenant. Ahd. You are declaring to him that be aware that you will see nothing from me except peace. Which means you did it by mistake. Khalas. It's a covenant. Ahd. It's a mithaq. But okay, but I, 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 I can cut him to pieces. Khalas. You give him the covenant. Leave him. <laughs> La ilaha illallah. This is how great Islam is. And yet, some, some ignorance, they keep saying, Islam was spread by swords. Sorry, sir, you know nothing about the history of Islam. Please go and read Islam. Okay, my point is, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim how it does not fit with the core concept of the beginning of the chapter. Chapter what? At-Tawbah, repentance, which start with? Bara'atum min Allahi wa rasulihi alladhiha Which means Allah is declaring the end of the covenant and the end of the treaty and declaring, you know, finishing this kind of agreement because they started doing it. So we are declaring that everything's finished. We will fight you now. Just to know it. So now we have three simple pieces of information. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is part of Al-Fatiha. The meaning of Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is I start by the blessings of the name of Allah and by, you know, seeking the support of Allah. Highly recommended to say it before every surah when you start it, okay? Especially when you start reading the Quran. Now, except with surah, chapter at tawbah Now, there's a hadith, very famous hadith. Different opinions about how sound it is, whether it's da'if. Some of them, they said da'if. Some of them, they said hasan. Some of them, they said sahih. In general, it's acceptable. Which is Kullu amrin dhi balin la yubda'u feehi bismillahi Fahuwa abtar aw aqta' aw ajdham The meaning, I don't want to translate it in Arabic Abtar, aqta' ajdham The Arabs need to be able to translate it Ah, Abu Umar What does abtar, aqta' ajdham mean? No English No English <laughs> لا. طبعا. Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم says in this hadith كل أمر ذي بال anything any matter that has a value has a weight okay does not you don't start it by بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم metaphorically فهو أبتر أقطع which means there is a missing part in it the meaning as if it's not complete as if the hadith is telling you, if you want to do, but not every single silly things, not everything, okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, no, not that case. Kalkul amrin the bal. Okay? Generally, the things that matter. <laughs> we say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Apart from the sunnah that when you start, uh, uh, you, you know, you want to eat Sabsna Rahman Rahim, you get into the house. This is a direct, you know, message about that. But generally speaking, your daily life, anything that matters, start with Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Or otherwise, as if there is something missed. So, complete the blessings by Bismillah Rahman Rahim. This is what I need just to highlight about Bismillah. الرحمن الرحيم. Let's start now with الفاتحة. By the will of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Now <coughs> there is a very well known hadith. Uh, sorry, a very well known ayah. ولقد آتيناك سبعا من المثاني والقرآن العظيم. There's a verse. We gave you the seven methani. The seven verses that are kept repeated and the great Quran. So Allah descri describing the Fatiha as if it is a part by its own and the whole Quran is <laughs> a part. Which means what? The importance of, even though Al-Fatiha is part of the Quran. It's like a, uh, uh, you know, it's a, it's a linguistic style. It's a special expression. When you want to give a highlight of something, you, even though it's part of it, but you mention, you mention it as if it's a complete part by itself. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa says in the Quran, O oh Muhammad, we have given you the seven repeated verses. Sab'il mathani. Tuthanna bi ma'na 
تكرر and the great Quran why Al-Fatiha is so important we will discover this when we understand the meaning of this great chapter Al-Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen everyone knows Al-Fatiha Arabs, non-Arabs because you can't pray without Al-Fatiha even many non-Muslims they know Al-Fatiha it's very simple very short seven verses بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين This very simple chapter why it's important let's go through the amazing treasures of this chapter. Now, the first message. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Now, there's a question. We know that your prayer is not accepted without... <laughs> it's invalid. If you don't read Al-Fatiha, your prayer is what? It's invalid. As if you have not prayed. While if you did not read anything from the Quran, still your prayer is valid. Highly recommended to, need, to read anything from the rest of the Quran. But the Fatiha must be read. So from one angle, you have to read it. From another angle, you must repeat it. How many times as a compulsory act of worship? The minimum, 17 times. Two times Fajr, four times Dhuhr, another four Asr, three Maghrib, four Isha. Seventeen times as a compulsory act of worship we read Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Tayyab. Above, this is phase number one. Phase number two. If we prayed what we call a sunan al-rawatib, which means the minimum of sunnah that Prophet Muhammad hardly left them or just rarely left them, 10 rak'at of sunnah. This is the minimum, <laughs> which means you will be reading al fatiha how many times? 27. If you, if you pray al duha two or four, plus at least two qiyam or two tahajjud, so, the minimum is 17, the average could be around 30 to 35 times a day. Wow! By the way, we are talking in the prayer, we are not discussing outside the prayer now. <laughs> okay? Maybe outside the prayer, maybe you will listen it when you, when, you, when, you, when you line up in the morning in the school, for example. When you open the radio, when you whatever. Okay. So, imagine. What is the message inside this chapter to a degree that you will, by your own lips, you repeat it around 30 times a day, and maybe you will listen to it another 10 times a day, so around 40 times. Why? What is the message? What is the amazing, powerful thing inside it? Now, <coughs> but let me, before I tell you that what kind of role Al-Fatiha is playing before I explain inside it. It contains a message. This message, by the way, gives you a brief of the whole message of the Quran. And it covers the whole message of your existence and your relation between you and Allah in simple, in simple words. So this message has been summarized like a slogan or like uh, what we call, you know, when we have, for example, what they call it in English, I think I write it here, in, you know, the military cons conscription, I think, Tajnid al-Ijbari, compulsory, the military service, the compulsory military service, okay? Or the commandos. Have you ever watched a video about commandos 
or the military compulsory services when they line up in the morning or before doing an exit, they repeat what? Some kind of sayings or whatever, shi'arat, okay? For example, the commanders of them, the chief officer of them, will say, hey, whatever, also they keep saying, like, you know, they are heating up themselves about their slogan. Their slogan could be, we are ready to, to die for the sake of our country. Commandos, they have different slogans, revolves around, we are the eagle, we are, for example, the lion, we are like whatever, we are ready to fight the enemies, we will protect our countries. Why they repeat them loudly, all of them in a collective manner. Do you, do you know that this happens or not? Wherever you go on earth, why small children in many different school systems in the morning, they are asked to repeat whatever they believe in. In China, they repeat some certain things. In some Arab Muslim countries, they repeat another things. Why? What is this? It's a reminder with the most important message of why this school is, or this military service is, or this army is, or the system of the country is. So we do it. We do it in our daily life. <laughs> so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows and he's teaching us to keep repeating the concept. But what is the concept? Concept, it's a brief, as I said, message of the whole story of your existence. Why you are here? To whom you should be connected? Why? <laughs> you know, the, the khulasa. You know, the, 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 uh, uh, the conclusion of your existence on earth. In a very simple word. Look now. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillahi. The first message starts with to tell you that praise and thanks are directed just for, just for, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, bro. Ah, sorry. I thought you want to speak. Ah, sorry. Ah, Zakallah khair. Yes. He raised up his finger. I thought he wanted to speak. So he was saying to Allah, Zakallah khair. Ah. So, all praise and thanks are just due to Allah. The first message, be careful to direct in your hearts or to feel, you know, the gratitude should be directed to anyone except Allah. After Allah, no problem. But number one, you need to thank your parents. You need to thank anyone who did good for you, but not before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first thing, be careful. As if, as you would say, alhamd, okay, alhamd for what? Allah, 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 Allah. It includes the great ni'am and blessings that you are already enjoying. So the first message, Okay, you have a lot of na'am, be careful. Don't direct your gratitude to anyone except to Allah. It's a reminder, be careful. Because if you are not careful, if you directed the gratitude to someone else, it means what? It means what? Shirk. You know shirk, concept of shirk? Shirk means you believe in Allah, you believe it does exist, you believe that he is a razzaq? Do you believe? No, no, no problem, mashaAllah. Ashara al ashara. However, you are giving a status, a value for something else or someone else in the same status like Allah. And this is the meaning of shirk. So it's like a daily training. Be careful. Thanks, gratitude, attitude should be just for. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say alhamdulillahi ilahi alameen. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. We have the concept of rabb in Arabic and the concept of ilah. So we need to know. It's good to know. The word rabb, you know, it's translated in English, the master or the lord. Al-Ilah, God, with capital G. But 
the problem is not in English. Let's go to Arabic. What's the difference between ilah and rab? <laughs> the word rab, when it is mentioned, it means in Arabic, uh, الرزاق المعطي المانع الخالق الرازق الموقف المبتدئ أو which mean anything happens in the universe starting finishing stopping acting deleting recreating is under the commandments of Allah the title the, uh, the name, the attribute that covers all of these actions is Ar-Rab. So when you say Rab, you are talking about Ar-Razzaq. When you say the word Rab, you are talking about the controller. When you say about Rab, the word Rab, you are talking about Muhyi, the one who gives life. When you are talking about Rab, you are talking about Mumit, the one who takes lives. Okay? While the word Ilah it means by default the divine being that deserves to be worshipped. That's why we use Allah and Rabb. So both together, this Ilah is Rabb. <laughs> okay? So this Rabb is the one who's in charge of everything. And because he is in charge of everything, he is the only God who deserves to be worshipped. Okay, so Alhamdulillah, be careful, this ilah, not any ilah like the aliha that they used to worship. Because, you know, Arab pagans, Romans, Indians, Greek, pharaohs, all of them, they were what? Polytheists, pagans, they used to worship multi, what? Multi? Gods, different gods, especially, I mean, the, the most rich culture in uh, many gods, basically, you know, the Greek and the Roman and in the East, in India, tens and tens and tens of gods. There is a God for the oven, God for the plant agriculture, God for the sexual, you know, intercourse, God for the sport. By the way, by the way, Nike is the name of the Greek God of sport. Do you know that? Nike is the God's name in the Greek culture of sport, God of sports. <laughs> okay, uh, escort, you know, for the escort, the word escort, <laughs> escort is the name of a God. Do you know that? When you go to through them, tens, tens, tens of God. Venus is the name of a God. Many, by the way, sometimes we have no idea about them, but anyway, the, the, the point. Most cultures on earth, whether east, west, north, south, they are what? They have many gods. They direct their obedience, respect, attitude to them. Arabs, they were like other cultures. But they used to say what? وَمَا نُعْبُدُهُمْ إِلَّا لِيُقَرِّبُونَ إِلَى اللَّهِ Zulfa. They used to claim, yes, we believe in God, because they used to mention Allah and God. and uh, They did not, by the way, this is very important to know. When we say non-believers, the Arabs, or when we say the polytheists, non-believers does not mean they don't, they did not, they did not believe in the existence of Allah. Those who rejected the idea of the existence of Allah, they are called, in our language now, what? Atheists. The Mulhideen. But we are talking about Mushrikeen, the associators, they admitted God's existence. And it's not just that. No, no. They even admitted that he's a razzaq as well. And he is al muhi al mumit by the way. Yet, they are non-believers. And it's very important to know. What's my, the evidence of what I'm saying? وَلَئِن سَأَلْتَهُمْ مَنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ لَيَقُولُنَّ إِيَشْ Allah. O oh, Muhammad, if you ask them who created, who created the heavens and earth, they would say Allah. Allah, 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 Allah. Okay, in another verse. وَلَئِن سَأَلْتَهُمْ مَنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ وَسَخَّرَ الشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرِ It's not just خَلَقَ and that's it. No, no, no. سَخَّرَ means he's still controlling. You know, تَسْخِيرِ 
it's an ongoing continuous process because some greek philosopher they say okay we have no problem sheikh don't worry you have no problem in the existence of god no worries but you know this god created and left the universe he's busy in something else some greek philosophers okay so they said he created exactly like the examples of some philosophers they say like the watch you know the watch the, the mechanical watch the old one you do what you charge it manually like this okay then you leave the clock w works by itself like this this is the resembling of some philosopher used to say okay we exist it's it's like a diplomatic way okay to deny god's continuous control of the universe so some arab pagans they used to adapt this philosophy they say well in Sa'al, uh, sorry astaghfirullah they used even to reject this philosophy because <laughs> they say allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wala in sa'altahum man khalaqa as-samawati wa sakhkhara ash-shamsa wal qamara yaqulun allah yet allah called them what kuffar what, what what do we call them the people of makkah before islam they are what kuffar <laughs> <laughs> you confuse us here, Sheikh. It's not me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided this. It's Anna. It's Anna, it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why you need to understand. The fact that you accept the idea of God's existence is not the end of the story, Sheikh. Okay, I believe in Allah. Wait, what do you mean you believe in Allah? I believe He does exist. You are not a believer in our terminology yet. And I believe He created. You are not a believer yet. As a terminology okay the full package of faith you will be called a believer when you accept Allah's existence plus he is the only God to be worshipped and he is the only God who created everything and controls everything then you accept his final see message uh, messenger and his final message in full submit to this you will be a believer and a muslim as well or otherwise you are outside of the fold of our religion in our understanding so therefore when we say alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen this is from the meaning of the word what rabb okay so you are declaring that i am directing my gratitude to rabb al alameen what is al alameen Alameen is jam'a, the plural of Al-Alam. Allah is asking you to keep declaring for yourself, to remind yourself that this Lord has not just created you, Mr. Human. There is what? Worlds. Amazing other worlds you might know about some of them. You might not know about some of them. What we know about them the world of angels, Alam al Malaika, part of the creation. The world of jinn, we know some information, not everything. If you don't believe in the existence of the jinn, in their existence, regardless of the details about them, you are an unbeliever. Because Allah is telling you that a group of a jinn, they were listening to Prophet Muhammad while he was reciting the Quran, for example, and to, to the end. Now, the world of the jinn, the world of al hayawanat the animals, the world of al-hasharat, the world of al nabatat we know, and maybe there's something else we don't know. We discovered recently what we call them virus and microbes. <laughs> they are part of the living, you know, well, amazing, we don't know. So that's why Allah is telling you, be aware direct your praise just to Allah this is his proper name be careful this Allah is the Rabb Rabb of what? Al -alamin. so don't let any philosopher or any kind of philosophy comes to you okay I, I know he is the Lord the Lord of this world but we are talking about another world Sheikh <laughs> no 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 there is no other world all types kinds of classifications of worlds completely he is the rub rub means 
who created them, controls them, stops them, brings them to life, ends them, everything. So this is what you have to believe in. So it's like reminding yourself with all of these meanings, just with the one first verse. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Then we go Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. And you need to remind, just another one. After you get this, uh, be careful. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. It's uh, affirmation, confirmation about his mercy. The most merciful, the most compassionate. And there's a lot of details about difference between Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. No need to mention them. Allah is confirming the amazing power of mercy just in case if you are afraid from his majesty, which you should. But some people, they might say, no, no, Rahman Rahim. This great because, you know, when you talk about greatness, when you talk about power, power generally in our understanding as a human beings is associated in most of the time with injustice. With, you know, attacking the others. Show me the most powerful people on earth when they are in their power, how merciful they are. Show me. When you have ultimate power or something similar to ultimate power, what happens to human beings? World War, world war yes. First World War, Second World War, and many countries. You, you know what happens on individual levels. If you are the most powerful person in the street or in the neighborhood, what will happen to the youth in the street? May God be with them. You will smash them. <laughs> Just to the... Oh, they are, 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 power, muscles, power. Wallahi, this is what happens. Subhanallah. Show me what is the percentage, or look around yourself, percentage, when someone really achieves some kind of limited power, most of the people, what they do? They delete everyone in their faces. They kill, they rape, they attack, they kidnap, they burn, they... On a state level, is there any, any need to give you an idea on state levels? <laughs> How many examples do we have? When some states, they have a big power, nuclear power or whatever, what happens? They are dealing with other nations like what? <coughs> like animals. They're killing them. And you need to give you examples? Do you need examples? No. You can witness easily, wherever you go. Go through the history and now we are witnessing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he mentioned Rabbil Alameen, who created everything, your mind will imagine what? Greatness, the power, the control, the creation. Be careful, Rahman Ar Rahim. This great, this great Rabb, even though he can do everything he wishes, but he's telling you that Anna He has ordained upon himself by himself mercy. As if in our language, he decided, okay, to take a covenant upon himself, by himself, that he will be merciful. Because theologically speaking, philosophically speaking, Allah can do anything he wishes. He can simply uh, vanish you, kill me without any reason. Is he capable, is he able to do that or not? But it's impossible to do it. It's possible to be done because nothing can be stopped, you know, against Allah. But he is giving you that Peace of mind, this will not happen. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Don't worry. You got the message? So this is the first meaning of when you say Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Now, Maliki, what? Yawmiddin. Malik, we have different qiraat in this. Malik and Malik, and this is part of the Ijaz al Quran, part of the inimitability, the miraculous aspect of the Quran. Malik means the owner, Malik, the king. So Allah is reminding you that you should be reciting and reminding yourself 
that there is a day called Yawm al-Din. What is Yawm al-Din? The day of accountability. Yawm al-Hisab. <laughs> and the one who owns this day, which means controls everything in it, and he is the king, which means the greatest thing in that day is the one whom you are attributing your thankful for him. So from one angle, he is reminding you about Yom al-Din. Why Yom al-Din? Because Yom al-Din is the end of everything here and the start of the eternal life, which could be, in my words, Yom al-Din is the most critical moment in your history. Not your history in this world of life, in your history, which is oh, eternal. God. Eternal. Because you have a start, which is your birth, or before your birth, because your, your soul is, has been injected in the womb of your mother months before your birth. But metaphorically, let's say you started since your birth, okay? Your birth, up to when? Endless. Eternal. خلاص ما في جنة أبدا ونار أبدا. By the way, we have no end. والله it's it's very scary. No end. خلاص. Once you've been created, you will live eternally. But we change what locations. Location A, worldly life. Location B, Barzakh, which is the barrier between this worldly life and the hereafter. Location C is the hereafter, to the end. Now, Yawm al-Din, Yawm al-Hisab, is the special day which Allah described fi Yawm in Kana miqdaruhu khamsina alfa sana. Which is equal to an hour time to 50,000 years. We, the, the, the accountability. After the accountability, I will be going to my final destination. Which is very horrible. And by the way, this is the important part of why Al-Hajj pilgrimage is important. Do you know why? What is Arafah? What is Arafah? Arafah is a training course for this day. What is Arafah? People are gathered, just simple piece of clothes, no ranks, no hats, no guards, no, no, no prestige, just asking forgiveness, seeking the acceptance of Allah in one place, no covering on their heads or in their, no colors, no prestige, no decor, no makeup, nothing, nothing, nothing. What is this? This is similar to what? But, Simple difference, we will be completely naked. <laughs> completely naked. And it's mentioned by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Which means that they will be not circumcised. And they will be completely naked. Aisha radiallahu anha, you know, as a, as a, you know, the woman of purity and chastity said, Ya Rasulullah, wa yanduru ba'duhum ila ba'd. He said, Ya Rasulullah, they will be looking at each other. And they're just, قَالَ يَا عَائِشَ الْأَمْرُ أَكْبَرْ مِنْ ذَلِكَ يَا عَائِشَ Oh, you know, no matter will be, you know, Jahannam will be there. The Jahannam will be waiting. They will be gathered in their sweats. قَالَ بِالْحَدِيثِ قَالَ يُحْشَرُ النَّاسُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ عَلَى قَدْرِ أَعْمَالِهِمْ فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يُحْشَرُ إِلَى قدميه إلى عقبيه ومنهم إلى ركبتيه ومنهم إلى حقويه ومنهم من يغمره العرق يلجمه العرق الجاما. Part of the phases of waiting for the final accountability in the day of judgment, people will be gathered in a certain status according to their sins and their you know rewards. So part of some people, there are billions and billions and billions and billions of people from Adam to the end. Allah knows how many trillions of human beings. All of them will be created. So some of them, they, they will be gathered in a, like an ocean or a, a pond or a pool of sweat up to their knees, up 
to their chests, and some of them, they will be completely sink inside it. And in that, that same time, سَبْعَةٌ يُظِلُّهُمُ اللَّهُ فِيهِ Seven ranks, seven classes of people, they will be under the shadow of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you have the evil people and the bad people, and you have the good. <laughs> now, the points, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين. So this is the most important day in your life, not life. In your entire life, because after this day, خلاص. It's the final stamp on your passport where you are going as a final destination. So what the importance of Al Fatiha? It reminds you. Minimum 17 times with your final destination. Or 27 times, or 30 plus, or 40 plus times of Yawm al-Din. And the good part of this news, basically, that the one who controls this day is who? Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. So don't worry. Just do your job and don't worry. No injustice. The divine courts of justice mahkamat al-adl al-ilahi many of us many of us might face injustice in the courts of the human beings and it happened for many of us we were taken to the jails by false accusations anyone can accuse you you might be walking in the street the judge himself might take a bribe in the political power they might uh, you know scared him a telephone from the boss or the president or whatever or the head of the the boss of a gang or anyone the injustice is easy to be done in your face or against you easy in this world of life that's why but that day no so don't be afraid just do your job type this is how we need to understand alhamdulillah rabbil alamin ar-rahman ar-rahim maliki yawm al-din now iyyaka na'bud do you remember we, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that this God is Rabb. Then he is teaching us how to say, Iyaka na'budu, which means it's just you that we worship. In Arabic, we have something we call taqdim wa ta'khir. We can say, Na'buduka, Ya Allah. We worship you, Ya Allah. This Arabic style, Iyaka na'bud, it's just you whom we worship, which to give the indication of none but you, which means it's like, for example, Shahada, when you say, La ilaha illallah. You start with the negation, bin nafi, which means you delete everything before you declare the only truth, before you say, it's as if you say, Allahu a'buduhu. Wait, 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 wait. Ana la a'budu ahadan. Illa Allah. <laughs> this is, in the Arabic style, the highest level of confirmation. Are you with me? This is the meaning of why you say in Arabic, Iyaka na'budu. We do not say, na'buduka ya Allah, or na'budu iyaka. Iyaka na'budu. We start with iyaka. It's like declaring, it's you and just you, ya Allah that we worship. Before I mention the word worship, I decide that it's just you. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Taib. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Okay, one of the notes that I put here <clears throat> about Maliki Yawm al I, I, I said here while I was preparing the morning. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so I talked about Yawm al and I forgot to comment on the concept of Malik. Allah is controlling Yawm <laughs> al-Din. Yawm al is the, the day of accountability. Any one of us definitely would love to be saved at that time. True or false? Is there anyone who does not care? <laughs> Say, well, I don't care, Sheikh. Whatever happens at that day. I'm a man, no, 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 you should care, because <laughs> if the final decision was not to the Jannah, yeah, it's a disaster. So which means, in Arabic I say, مَصْلَحَتُكَ أَن تَعْقِدَ الصُّلْحَ وَتُصْلِحَ عَلَاقَتَكَ بِمَنْ يَمْلِكُ ذَلِكَ الْيَوْمِ Which means, 
It's out of your interest, your definite interest, by necessity, to fix your relation with the one who controls that day. Let me give you a simple idea, just to make it simple. If you are in a, in a country where you will be standing, you know, before the, uh, uh, a very powerful judge in the court. And they told you, if the head of that court knows you and he knows about how great you are and how nice and good you are, you will be saved. If he does not know you, if you do not fix your relation with him, may Allah, be, may God be with your soul. You are lost. What you will do? What you will do? Basically, common sense. You know that the one who controls the decision whether you are to be killed or imprisoned or to be rewarded, whatever, is the head of the court in a specific place. Definitely, the, the police will take you to him, for example, uh, six months later or whatever. Well, your mind will be focused on what? How? No. To know. Then, okay, you knew him. Then, you do what? You try to reach him. You try to contact. <laughs> you try to, to pay money to find a wasta. You know wasta? You know wasta is very famous in Jordan. You know wasta? Shouldn't you know wasta in English? Yes? Connection? Mediator? But this is not the people who are Mediator? Vitamin, vitamin, wow. Okay? Wasta. In Arab words, including my country, vitamin Mao is much more powerful 10 times than magic. You know, you know, I think in Pakistan too, any problem will be solved by vitamin Mao, which is wasta, connection. Any, any problem you do, just, hello, Hadr Sidi, release him, thank you. Don't worry, 10 seconds, everything is deleted. Khalas. <laughs> La ilaha illallah. You see? Now, basically, now, if you know someone in charge and he is holding the whole power in his hand, you will do anything, you will pay anything you can just to satisfy him, to reach him, to contact with him, to convince him. Walillahi al-mathal al-a'la. I know, you know, we know that the one who controls Malik Yawmuddin is So please take care of that file <laughs> in a simple way, if you believe. If you don't believe, may Allah be with you. <laughs> I can't tell you what will happen. قالوا يا ويلنا من بعثنا من مرقدنا هذا ما وعد الرحمن وصدق المرسلون وضرب لنا مثله ونسي خلقه قال من يحيي العظام وهي رميم قل يحييها الذي أنشأها أولا مرة those people who denied they were making fun and life يعني you know these verses came in the context of a non-believer in our in our words now the atheist a dahri قال يا محمد Atura Rabbaka, one of the mushrikeen of Mecca came to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was holding a piece of a rotten you know, uh, bones. You see? You know, when, when you uh, press it like this, you will smash it as if it's a piece of cookies, you know, like a chocolate cookies, just, you know, very fluffy, something like that. Like this. So this very old rotten bones of a human being. He brought this piece and he said, hey, Muhammad, أترى ربك يحيي هذا العظم بعد ما رم. He was, you know, acting in arrogance, making fun of Prophet Muhammad. He say, "Your Lord, you are telling me your Lord is able to bring this rotten bones into life again." فقال الله عز وجل نعم ويدخلك جهنم. He said yes, and he will get you into the jahannam. Then Allah سبحانه وتعالى رفيد وضرب لنا مثلا ونسي خلقه. He was giving you an example, making fun of you, Muhammad, and he forgot his, his creation. Which is more difficult, to start something from nothing or to, to repeat something after you have done it? وضرب لنا مثلا ونسي قال من يحيي العظام قل يحيها الذي أنشأها أول مرة. The one who created it the first time is able to 
to bring it to life again, which is much more, much more easier. So our point is Maliki Yawm Ad-Din. He is the controller, the one who owns, and he is the king at that day. So please fix your relation with him from now. Because at that time, خلاص, there is no reverse. It's like, it's like they say, irreversible thing. You can't go reverse. <laughs> Once you are there, قال رب ارجعون لعلي أعمل صالحا فيما تركت. What is the answer? كلا. No. إنها كلمة هو قائلها ومن ورائهم برزخ إلى يوم يبعثون. From this context, you understand this word will be said when? At the time of? No. ومن ورائهم برزخ إلى يوم يبعثون. يوم الوفاة. It's the moment of death. It's when you are exposed for the first time in your life to the angel of death. Look. So, قال فكشفنا عنك قطاءك فبصرك اليوم حديد. We have uncovered, you know, discovered. So you have a very sharp. Part of the meaning, you are able to witness the angel. Now, the angel of death is witnessed just by you. The people around you, they know nothing, they feel nothing, they see nothing. But you see the reality. At that moment, please, let me go back. Wallahi, I will pray. Get me back. I will not torture anyone. Get me back. I will not kill anyone. I will not report anyone. Please, let me back. I will do a salih. Habibi, rahat alayk. You know rahat alayk? خلاص راحت قال كلا نو نو سو اتس جاست كويك ايدي اباوت ذا داي اوف جادجمنت عشرة ربع الصلاة اوه انا اسف طب والله انا انا اي واز اندر امبريشن اوف اسف اسف جدا انا سامحوني والله انا اي ثوت ذا برايرز 10 15 I'm sorry, Jazakallah khair tabihtu. Sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Qumu ila salatikum. Jazakumullah khair. We continue next Tuesday. Assalamu alaikum. Shukran ya Abu Sharif. Nabbatni. Allahim fakka.